question uh, 2part b um, we've already differentiated the function um, the function that's uh, written here we've differentiated it and we got this as our, our gradient function dy dx equals 6 minus 2xy over 3y squared plus x squared and we're asked to find the exact coordinates of the points on c okay on the of the points on c for which dy dx equals zero so there's a few things you've got to realize here first of all we're going to find the exact coordinates so it should be in exact not rounded form so if it comes out as a third or something in terms of pi or something like that you have to leave it in that form that's one thing we've got to notice about the way the questions are worded exact and the other one it says according to the points so we should realize that probably going to be more than one answer okay so those little clues will help us when we are um, continuing this question all right for which dy dx equals zero so we found dy dx we just got to make it equal zero so let's do that let's say six minus two xy over three y squared plus x squared equals zero okay now what do we do here when we find coordinates well x's and y's okay let's just go with what we no, how do we solve an, uh, an algebraic fraction equation? Let's get rid of the denominator. Let's multiply both sides by the denominator, in which case, on the left side, the denominator will disappear. 6 minus 2xy, you multiplied by 3y squared plus x squared, cancelled out. And on the right side, you multiplied anything by 0, it becomes 0. Okay, so that looks a bit simpler now. So, again, we've got two unknowns. We can't find x or y um, like this, all right? Unless we kind of um, do some guessing and checking, which won't be very easy, seeing as it won't be um, a, a, a number that's um, easy to write down in an exact form. It'll probably be a serve form. Okay. So what we should do is, let's just do what we can. Let's make one of them the subject of the formula. So for example, let me make y the subject. I could make x the subject as well if I wanted to. Okay. But let's make y the subject. If you make y the subject, you have 6 is equal to 2xy. Divide both sides by 2y. We have 6 over 2y is equal to, sorry, divide by, let's do x, no problem. You can do either way. Let's see what happens. So you have x equals 6 over 2y, so you end up with uh, 3 over y equals x. Okay? So 3 over y equals x. Okay, so we'll have here y cubed plus, and you've got 3 over y instead of x, so you have 3 over y squared times y minus 6 times uh, 3 over y. This is probably more complicated. Um, we could have made y the subject, in, in which case you'll have y equals 3 over x. In that case, you'd only have to change the ones in these two. But anyway, we'll, we'll just go, it should be fine whichever way we do it. So you have y cubed plus 9 over y squared times y minus, that's going to be 18 over y, equals zero. Now the y here, and here will cancel out. So you've got y cubed plus 9 over y minus 18 over y. Well you can see that that's going to give you um, one denominator. Okay, you'll have that'll be plus 9 minus 18 all over y equals zero. Okay, and that gives you minus 9. So you've got y cubed minus 9 over y equals zero. Let's let's get rid of the fraction. Multiply everything by y. You have y to the power of four minus nine equals zero. So you have y to the power of four is equal to nine. So y is equal to the fourth root of nine. Aha! You're finding the fourth root, an even root. The points because this is where that probably comes in now. That means there's a positive and a negative possibility for our answers. Okay, We're the ones that are putting the root sign there, so it could either be positive or negative fourth root of 9. Now, what does the fourth root of 9 mean? Okay, What does it mean? Like We know that, for example, the nth root of a means a to the power of 1 over m. So let's just apply this to, to this. It's plus or minus. You can say... Uh, 9 to the power of a quarter. Right? Now, I know that 9 can be expressed as 3 squared. So it's 3 squared to the power of a quarter. Now, 3 squared to the power of a quarter is 3 to the power of a half. And 3 to the power of a half is the square root of 3. So you've got plus or minus the square root of 3. 
Okay, so that's the y coordinates. There's two coordinates. There's y equals root 3, and there's y equals negative root 3. Now we know that x equals 3 over y. So let's let's see. We can see when y is equal to root 3. Let's move this one down a bit. It's stuck together. Okay, no problem. When y is equal to root 3, then x is equal to 3 over root 3. Now, we don't like to leave the answer like this. We want to rationalize the denominator. So we multiply by what it is, the same thing, root 3. You have to multiply the numerator by root 3 as well. So we're left with 3 times root 3 divided by, well, root 3 times root 3 is 3. 3's three cancel out, you're left with root 3. So when y is root 3, x is root 3, that's the point. Root 3, root 3. Okay? And we also know that y can also be negative root 3. So it's going to be a very similar thing. So you have 3 over negative root 3. And you multiply by root 3 both top and bottom. Okay, you're left with 3 root 3 over negative 3. They cancel that. You're left with negative root 3. So the other point is when x is negative root 3, y is negative root 3. So here we have our two points. Those are our places where the gradient is zero on this function. Okay? And we have sorted out this problem. Okay? Thank you very much for paying attention. So before that, just remember, very important things, exact, said form, we don't want to round it, and write one point, whatever. And second points, we know there's more than one point, so that should, you know, make you realize uh, when you get to this stage, you're not going to just write the fourth root of nine, it's plus or minus the fourth root of nine. And we just try to simplify it. Okay, so there's some important pointers for us to know how to answer such questions. Thank you very much for paying attention.